through space <laughs> at some unimaginable, ever-increasing velocity. <laughs> like we're all on one giant bus headed to the same destination. So do your best to relax, enjoy the ride, and just try not to be that butthole that nobody wants to sit next to. <laughs> So your first step toward humility is realizing that the whole earth is a relative speck of dust in the universe and that the size of your role on that speck can be represented by a fraction whose numerator is one and whose denominator is roughly seven and a half billion. But once you've absorbed those facts, the balance will come into focus when you're ready to say, yeah, but that's my speck to help take care of. And no matter how tiny, that fraction is my fraction. The second step will come when you realize that no matter how successful you are, your career, the most satisfying, lasting achievement, will be the personal relationships that you establish and maintain, especially those within your own family. And that the real foundation to all relationships is being aware aware of how the thing you are about to do or say will make someone feel. Maya Angelou was not a member of our class, <laughs> but I'm going to use one of our quotations anyway. She said, people will forget what you said, people will forget what you did, but people will never forget how you made them feel. Everything you say about another person the three criteria. Is it true? Is it kind? Is it, is it necessary? Once you master humility, you might want to progress to integrity, which is even a little trickier because in order for it to have any meaning, you have to do it all the time. It's kind of the opposite of dancing like nobody's watching, in that you always have to practice it like someone is watching, even when they're not. The last virtue related to humility I want to talk about is gratitude. This is especially appropriate for the class of 67 because it's written right into our class motto. And most of us don't consistently quote our class motto on a daily basis. But for the record, we do have one, and right there in the middle it says, thank those who have helped you through your hardships. For most people, this is pretty automatic for the small things. Thank you are probably a couple of the first words you learned. Someone handed you a cookie, your mom made you say thank you. Now as adults, someone hands us a cookie, we still say thank you. But ironically and sadly, some of the bigger things are the ones that never get acknowledged. People share their homes, their cars, their time, their effort, money for food, clothes, books, tuition too many occasions, it just never gets mentioned. Often, some of the people close to us are the ones who get most taken for granted. So remember to thank those who have helped you, not just through hardships, but through everyday life. And while we're on the subject, as a quick aside, I want to say thank you and happy birthday to our classmate, Jim Sparks. <coughs> Who <laughs> <laughs> was my best friend through the whole process and through a few hardships. We will not be singing happy birthday here tonight. <laughs> <laughs> so just one last piece of advice. If you want to avoid awkward moments as much as possible, avoid singing goofy songs like happy birthday and take me out to the ball game as often as possible. <laughs> But most importantly, I'd like to thank the entire class of 1967 for just generally being an outstanding group of people. I don't know what it's like here now, but 50 years ago, our student body comprised a pretty wide range of social, economic, and intellectual classes. 
Yet what I remember is a group of kids that consistently afforded each other not meanness and exclusion, but a genuine respect and mutual responsibility, like the kind you show family members, all up and down that whole spectrum. And so for making high school a place that felt like a neighbor <coughs> home, a place where we could all begin to learn both confidence and humility, I thank all of our class, including those who are with us still and those who are not. Thank you all for your patience and attention to the class of 2017. Enjoy the rest of your evening. Tomorrow, go spend some time with your fathers. Maybe even tell them thank you. And Monday morning, start working hard. <laughs>